بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمد ونصلي على رسول الكريم أما بعد لا يأتينا على أمة ما أتى على بني إسرائيل my ummah will duplicate the ways of the Bani Israel. There will be a personification. They will manifest the actions of the Bani Israel inch by inch, step by step. Going to the history of the world like a small child, Allama Adam al Asma kullaha. First, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught Adam alayhi salam the names of everything. Then, as different eras and times grow, when the child gets bigger, after teaching them names and you start showing them things, then you show them things and you describe to them things. And then the last when they grow up and they're big, then you give them the keys to your business and say, now I've taught you everything, now you can run it properly. Like that Allah SWT called Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam and gave him the key to Jannah, as-salah miftahul Jannah. So the whole life of this world progress over time. Likewise, Sharia. A small child, as it grows, its clothes, its shoes has to be changed, it evolves. Until one day in the life of the child, his sizes don't change. Normally, sizes don't change. Like that also, different Anbiya Ali Musallatu Wasallam came, Shira wa Minhaja, different Shariats, laws, Commandments came and then the last Akhirun Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam came. Then Shariat never changed and this Shariat was there till Qiyamah. So understand this world to be a child and growing in the culmination of this and this world will end. Likewise, Shaitan and Iblis was in the beginning and the initial stages of this world. His objective was it. With Qulna, when we told the Malaika, Usjudu li Adam, fasajadu illa Iblis, make sajda, he didn't make. Since I was told to make sajda to this insan, and it was a cause of my failure, I'm going to make him fail exactly. His failure in his bunyad and foundation of destruction will be like mine. I will make him make sajda to me and everything connected to me. I will make sure this insan doesn't make sajda to Rabbul Alameen. Now that is significant and concurrently just remember we've discussed previously about science, medicine, genetic, gene and editing, transhumanism, then the uh, subject of black magic, sorcery, witchcraft, satanism, idol worship. All of these connect, are connected in over time and you will see through the incident of the Bani Israel how it is all connected. The Quran is a hudal lin nas, it's a hidayat for mankind. Quran has power, like every Nabi came with a miracle, a mu'ajizah to wipe out batil of the time. The Quran is a loving miracle to wipe out batil of every era. We did Surah Fatiha in every rakat of every salat telling us that is Ummah Tawassata. This is a moderate Ummah where they are in sync and balance with Allah and His Rasul. But when you go to extreme, Idina Sirat al Mustaqim, there's one path, the straight path, this is the road, you stick to unto it, you will be successful. This is your criteria. Now, the beginning chapters of the Quran is telling us. That we should not be like the Ghayr al maghdubi The Maghdub ulama and commentators explain are the Jews. And Walad Dalin are the Christians. That Allah's anger won the Jews for reasons which we'll go through now. And Dalin, they were astray. Then, after that, the opening ayat of the Quran in Allah starts with Surah Al Baqarah. So normally any book, the introductory chapters are quite important and imperative. And then the introductory verses to say that if you want to be on the straight path, what should you do? Alladheena yu'minuna bil ghaib. Without question, that was the mistake of the Bani Israel. They want to see everything. Even after Musa alayhi salam came, they, they seen all the miracles. Why this is called Musa li qawmihi. The water came out. The cloud you shade them. They got food from Jannah. 
they still were not content that they worship the cow. Then after that, when uh, Musa Islam told him about the Torah, they said, we don't believe that you spoke to Allah. They, they refuted it. So Musa Islam had to choose tribe leaders. They went there. They heard Musa Islam. There was a veil. They still said that we want to see Allah without the veil. Allah is speaking to this Ummah in this Quran says Ya Bani Israel Udkuru ni'mati allati an amtu alaykum wa anni fadaltukum ala al-alameen means like the Bani Israel I gave them bounties and I made them virtuous over other nations O oh, Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam don't get caught in their trap because I've made you better than them you are the chosen, chosen ones. But after all of this, don't be like them, where your hearts are hard, like rocks, actually harder than rocks. Law anzalna hadha al-Quran ala jabal. Quran is revealed on a mountain. You will see it. Khashi'am mutasadyam min khashatillah. It will shake, it will shatter. Because of the power of the Quran, your hearts are so hard. When you hear Quran, it doesn't shake you one but not even a drop, a tear falls down from your eyes. From mountains, springs, streams come out. From you, nothing comes out. So don't become like the Bani Israel. So the first usul was, يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْبِ Except without question, don't look for proof. Then يُقِيمُونَ salah. Establish salah. وَمِمَّا رَزَتْنَا مِنْفِقُونَ Now let me say two things. One is physical ibadah, and one is monetary ibadah. So means, all my wealth and all my life should be for Allah. That's the criteria Ummah of Muhammad. If you want to be successful in dunya and akhirat, I'm spelling it out to you in black and white. Then again highlighting, وَالَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِمَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْكَ وَمَا أُنزِلَ مِنْ قَبْلِكَ وَبِالْآخِرَةِ هُمْ يُقِنُونَ That your speciality is, you will believe and follow Allah and His Rasul without any testimony or witnessing like the Bani Israel. Don't get caught in their trap. If you don't get caught, أُولَٰئِكَ عَلَىٰ هُدًا مِّن رَبِّهِمْ وَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ Then these are the people that are rightly guided and you will be successful in dunya and akhirat. Surah Al-Baqarah, the significance of the cow. 514 times ulama explained that Allah has mentioned Musa alayhi salam in the Quran. And the Bani Israel and the incidents also have been mentioned in many, many paras. Highlighting from the beginning in the land, we did Surah Fatiha significance, then the beginning ayat, then the first, first chapter after Surah Fatiha is Surah Al-Baqarah, the Surah of the Baqarah, to highlight the importance of the cow. Imam Razi explains that in the time of each of the society, whether it was the royals, the palace, the hierarchy, they were involved in sorcery, they needed it in their daily lives, they needed it in war, they needed it, so black magic, Mesmerism, hypnotism, charms, spells, the occult inventions of science was part and parcel and it's all connected. That's why the challenge was a magical challenge. Normally you will show strength, you will show other feats. But the challenge of Fir'aun was a magical, it was a sorceress, it was an occult challenge. So the cow significant in those days was that amongst the Egyptians, in the ancient, in, in, ancient Egyptians, the animal, the cow was very sacred and it was said to be incarnation. They would believe that they were di divine powers and reincarnation. They also believed that it was a manifestation of God uh, himself. And they were connected to fertility, to life, to motherhood. And in Egypt, the most sacred, if you look at the paintings and the walls and the images, the most sacred animal in Egypt was the cow. So it was like a goddess. And they believed that uh, it gave birth to sun and that was the beginning of time, etc. Summary wise that the Egyptians were engulfed in idol worship and shirk, but the cow, Surah Baqarah, was highlighted. Let's just go through quickly the Zoroastrians. They believed that there was a spirit of the cow and they said it was the soul of the earth. You go into the Celtic ancient European mythology, the cattle goddess, Greek mythology, the sun god 
We had seven herds and oxen, then the Chinese and the Japanese and the Hindus. So this cow is very significant for us as the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because Shaitan wants us to make sajda to this cow, this makhluk, this creation and turn our attention in those two constituent factors. Your life means your time. Where are you utilizing your time? My 24 hour day, what I spend my time on, that is what I worship. Because a ma'bud is something which you give time to what you worship. So giving worship time to anything else is tantamount to his worship. Likewise, my wealth, whatever I'm spending time, my wealth on, is a sign that I am worshipping, that I love that. Am I spending my wealth on Allah and His Rasul in the right avenues or in the wrong avenues? And this is the beginning. So Surah Al-Baqarah, the beginning and the fall of the Bani Israel and the end, the end where Allah concludes with Surah Falaq and Surah Nas where the Jews so Bani Israel connected Baqarah. Bani Israel, the Jews, they did black magic on Nabi Alayhi Salatu Wasalam. And the strand of hair, Nabi Alayhi Salam seen the angels and he told Sahaba to retrieve it. 11 ayat, 11 knots. But Labid, who was given the responsibility to do the jadu and seer on Nabi Alayhi Salam, the Jews did it as well. So Quran started with the Baqarah, they don't make such that and don't follow the Bani Israel. I'm telling you now, disclaimer. At the end also, showing that the Jews, they inherently use Jadu and black magic. Min al jinnati wan nas. And thus, lizards and these reptilians from jinn and insan, that you need to kul a'udhu bi rabbil falak, kul a'udhu bi rabbil nas. Your only salvation, O Ummat Muhammad, from all the turmoils, from the small Dajjals and the big magician Dajjal, if they could do Jadu and say on the Nabi of Allah, then who are you? If they can, small Dajjals have so much power to control Makhluk, then when the big Dajjal comes, what Jadu will he put over your eyes? So we told also, you read Surah Ikhlas, Falak and Nas, morning and evening three times, Yakfi kam in kulli shay. It will suffice for you for all your needs. So Quran is starting at the beginning to say, hey, does this Bani Israel don't come close to their lives? And I'm concluding my Quran to tell you that the Bani Israel did say on your Nabi also. And like how Nabi Allah SWT ended the Quran with the Amal of Seer and Jadu, the end of the world will also, the climax, the pinnacle, the peak, the termination of this world will be through the doka and the deception of the biggest deceivers will be Dajjal and he'll want you to make such a to him. But he will use all these avenues of science, medicine, transhumanism, sorcery, satanism, idol worship, whichever, whichever form possible, he can convince you and con you. Dajjal will come and he's going to do that. وَبَعُوا بِغَضَبٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ And the result was that they got Allah's anger. So if you're not going to follow me, like the Bani Israel, you're going to get my anger and you're going to see destruction and that will be a detriment to your dunya and akhirat. We were in Jamaat in uh, Jordan and we met one brother, Abu Ibrahim. He was originally from Germany. He's an uh, original Arab staying in Germany and he came to Jordan. Allah gave him hidayat. I heard this incident directly from him. He said he was in Germany, he went, and I'm going to cut the story, story very short, summarize it. He was in Germany, there was a festival of fools and they have different scenarios to show how the world's people of the world are made fools. One room has like a blank screen and they so show people laughing and some people crying means the television because it's nothing there, it's blank. But we get happy, we get sad, we get elated. Five hours, ten hours, twenty hours of the day. This is actually the real fools. Like they have different scenes and scenarios. And anyway, he went there, he realized that he's been fooled. How Allah wants to give you diet, he decides. 
Then uh, you seen a vision in a dream and you decided to travel, you went to India, you went to the Buddhas, you went to different places and uh, he tried everything but he did not see in the dream, he seen an individual and light emanating from that person. Eventually in that area where he was with the Buddhas and uh, the yoga people, he uh, met a Jamaat, he invited him, gave him Dawat and he got affinity to them, he decided to go to the Markas. He said one day when I woke up and I'm uh, I've heard this directly from him, there's no third party. He woke up, he said he was in a form of Kash where he could see the unseen. It was a time of Tahajud and he could uh, see different people. But he's seen people in a form of animals, he's seen people in a form of uh, light. So some people had no light at all, some people had more light. He said the Fajr Bayan then came and he thought so in his vision, he's seen he'll be taken back and found in a person of great light and vision. So he said, he seen Mona Omar Sapa Lumpuri, Rahmatullah Alayhi, giving the bayan, and from his eyes, lights, as bright as he could see, was shining out and flying out of his body, emanating from his body. But he thought in his mind that the light that I was looking for might be something more different. Then uh, he asked some brothers, is there anybody else senior here? And he said, no, there's Hazrat Imala Inam Nassan, Rahmatullah Alayhi. And he managed to get an uh, appointment with him and he went to see Hazrat Ji and when he met Hazrat Ji, he said that light which I seen in my dream, I seen that and I took back to Hazrat Ji and that's how he changed his life. Came to Jordan, he was involved in effort of Tabligh and Dawah. Then he said one of his friends who was in Germany, also his son, was completely off, completely. Now his, this person's story was that he was on drugs and he was on different issues and he had no peace in his life, so he decided to go to these uh, uh, spiritual awareness centers in Germany. So, and now we need to be careful nowadays also. People, are, a lot of people are into yoga, they into, there's a lot of satanic, satanism and other connotations to all the things that we are doing. The base, amal for peace, for happiness is salah, tilawat, Quran, these are the amal, the ummah is looking for solutions in everything else, they'll never find any solution and it's an azab and a torment and Allah protect us that they are going in every avenue to look for peace and happiness. There's no other avenue. Allah is not kept happiness in any other avenue besides the way which Janabi Rasulullah has brought to us. So anyway, he went to this place. They told him the certain conditions. He said, I'll comply with it. Uh, they told him, okay, sit down and we're going to do certain things. So he agreed. He started the procedure and he said, I could see something coming into me. And I thought, so this is very bad. So I read, I shaitani rajim. He said that light disappeared, like a dark light, like some form of a creature darkness. And this person got a shock and he said, what did you do? Get, go out from here, just disappear. So he didn't know what he did wrong. So anyway, he left a few days later again, he was in this trauma and this depression. So he came back again and the person said, I seen you last time, I remember you. If you say the thing again, I'm going to change your way. So he said, no, no, I, I, I need your help. So he did that same ritual. And that thing came into him and he said after that he changed completely and when became satanic and a lot of things changed in his life. So the father phoned by Abu Ibrahim to tell him about the story that my son is like this here. So then he sent him to, told him, sent him to Jordan, I'll get some Amil's people that work with uh, Sihar to, to check him out. He came to Jordan, they did the treatment. He said that night after the treatment was done and this boy came up and he was speaking Arabic. But I don't know this boy to ever have spoken Arabic in his life. And he was saying that we're going to rule the world, we're just waiting for a certain quantity. Then he mentioned some movie stars and he mentioned some musicians and he met a host of presidents of countries and he said, these are all our team. He said, I realized that there was shaitan in him, the shaitan that was going to leave. So these cults that are walking all around the world are using jinnat and the child will also use a jinn. So that jinn then just left, he fell unconscious and the boy said, I don't know anything, I don't even know what happened. And it so happened, he went back to Germany, he went out in Jamaat four months and then Allah SWT took his life away. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq of amal and protecting us. We should try to make a habit of reading Surah Tabarak. Inna suratan fil Qurani thalathuna ayah shafaat li rajulin hatta hufira lahu that it will intercede on one's behalf until he is forgiven wa ya tabarak alladhi let us make it a habit to read every night tabarak alladhi mana'u Allah biha min adab al-qabr Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will prevent the adab of the qabr for a person who reads Surah Tabarak وَكُنَّا فِي أَهْدِ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ نُسَمِّيهَا الْمَانِعَ We should call it Al-Maniya وَإِنَّا فِي كِتَابِ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ سُورَةٌ مَنْ قَرَى بِهَا فِي لَيْلَةٍ فَقَدْ أَكْثَرَ وَطَابَ He has superseded and exhausted all avenues of good 
if we make it a habit to read Surah Tabarak wa akhir da'wana ni alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin.